I believe all race car drivers that drives the dirt and drives midgets and drives and whatever. The most Every one of these kids racing. around here that's racing, they think of either NASCAR or Indianapolis. And the green flag. Every, everybody wants to run a stock car. That's in the back of their mind is some, someday running Daytona. Same way with Indianapolis. In the back of every young driver's mind, all he can remember is Indianapolis. My dad had race cars from the day I was born. Dad always had four or five guys around the garage there working on it and all this stuff. But my bedtime was half the time was falling asleep in that seat of that race car. I always wanted to be a driver, naturally. I bought a midget. I was working at the shoe factory, and old Joe Shane, he had an old midget sitting down the, on his lot, red number seven. He didn't have a motor in it, and I bought it off of him. I paid him five dollars a week for it, <laughs> and he wanted three hundred dollars for it. I had a picture of it during my time in the service, and I bet you I had that out a thousand times, showed it to different guys. You know that this is this is what I'm going back to, and this is my race car, and blah 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 blah. I think I wore the old picture out. I'm proud of that old race car. <laughs> I won an ungodly amount of midget races. Of course, when some owner sees you driving midgets and, man, he really goes, you know, he really goes. Well, let's put him in our, put him in our, dirt, our dirt car, our championship car. And that's the way that works. Everybody's looking for, him for a driver at the speedway that sticks his neck out. He had no other racetrack like in Naples. You're running faster there than you already placed Thank you, Bill. It's still at that time in the United States. Right behind him. The front straightaway was like, it was rough. The corners was paved and the front chute was still bricks. It looked like you had two basketballs out there coming down to shoot. To your front wheels would be back. Jump it up down and get two basketballs they come up. up as they come down that home stretch. I don't care who they are over there. They get nervous when they're getting in them cars. There's a feeling there of, you know, just a bad feeling or not a good feeling. It's an uneasy feeling. You can get hurt bad in them things. If you knew it was coming, you'd say, oh, man, here I go. I remember in 55, I come out of number four corner at Indianapolis on my qualifying run, and I was running real good. And I come out of that corner, and it broke loose, and I spun it. And it spun four times going down the front chute, and boy, I got down real low in it, you know, and I thought, oh, man, and here I go. Instead of that, why, when it quit spinning, it went it was going straight down the racetrack, and I come up out of it, and I, I drove it right on into the pits, Ain't no fun when you junk one of them things out, boy. And I'd done that a couple of times. I had a good ride in 56. And a guy named Curtis, Frank Curtis. I had driven his sprint car. I was still driving his sprint car. He called me and he said, Chuck, he said, we got a race at Reading. He says, Sunday. He says, why don't you fly out? And then he said, I got the race car all loaded and everything. We'll just jump in my truck and we'll go back to Speedway. I said, okay. So that was the first weekend of May. So anyway, I, we, I flew out there and, and the first lap in the sprint car, I set him a new track record. The second lap, I didn't come back. I hit the cushion and flipped it and tore down acre, an acre of fence and broke my arm. And I got back in that same sprint car five weeks later I had a beer can on my arm. We put the beer can on over at my tavern. I owned this tavern over here. And I don't know, one of the guys says, well, why don't you take one of them beer cans? We'll split it. If you want to go out there and run, we'll wrap it around your arm in case it breaks again. <laughs> You'll be all right. So we put the beer can around there and, 
and I taped her real good, and boy, I went for Redding. It was a hundred lapper, and boy, at 50 lappers, we was leading it. And at 50 lappers, my arm got to hurting so bad, so I started losing spots, and I dropped her back to eighth or ninth. So, but we, I finished. But boy, when it was over with, my arms hurt so bad, I had tears running down my eyes. Boy, it hurt. I don't really miss it. Them glorified go-karts are driving now. I, I don't miss it. it. It finally wears off. You wear off. You think about how easy it is to get hurt in one of them crazy things. And, and so you just kind of pass it.